We need your innovation research. We need your ideas and ground, groundbreaking, society-changing technologies. It is events like these that keep inspiring youth to continue to develop their skills and expand their knowledge so that they can participate in the move towards a more sustainable future. All of us need to play a role in building the future we want to see. A future where energy is clean, affordable, and reliable. A future where we can generate good jobs without creating greenhouse gas pollution. At the 2021 United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26, the Prime Minister committed to a net zero electricity grid by 2035. Since then, every other G7 country has made a similar commitment. Because all major economies recognize that developing a clean electricity system is the foundation needed to decarbonize transportation, buildings, and industrial processes by 2050. In fact, President Biden and Prime Minister Trudeau agreed last April to release clean electricity regulations by this fall. And just like the United States, we're following through on this commitment. That's why I'm pleased to announce that we're releasing the draft clean electricity regulation. Part of our government's comprehensive plan to develop a clean, affordable, and reliable electricity grid, and ultimately to build a brighter future for generations of Canadians. Why do we want to build a cleaner grid? Let me give you three reasons. One, to tackle climate change. Phasing down unabated fossil fuel power plants will cut hundreds of millions of tons of pollution that is hurting our communities. Two, to become an engine of prosperous net zero economy. Canada already has a big head start with a grid that is almost 85% clean. Meaning the growing demand for electricity with clean technologies represents an enormous economic opportunity for Canada and Canadians. And three, to help Canadians spend less money on energy, shifting to clean electricity saves households on their energy bills, away from the shocks of yo-yoing gas and oil prices. These regulations are a crucial step, yes, but they alone won't get us to that vision. To get there, we all need to work together. And the Government of Canada is coming to the table like never before with a range of investment to help. As my friend and colleague, Minister Jonathan Wilkinson, Minister of Natural Resor Energy and Natural Resources, stated two days ago, when he released the Government of Canada's vision for clean electricity, Canada is embarking on a major transformative nation building project that will pay dividends for decades to come. The federal, provincial and territorial governments, indigenous governments, utilities, private sector, trade unions, experts, environmental organizations, and all Canadians, we all have an important role and shared responsibility in this national endeavor. This kind of cooperation is already happening. Think of the Oneida Energy Storage Project right here in Ontario. The six nations of the Grand River, private industry, the governments of Canada and Ontario, all working hand in hand on the largest battery storage project in the country. C'est donc un grand plaisir pour moi d'annoncer aujourd'hui la publication de notre projet de règlement qui soutiendra notre vision nationale de réseau électrique. This is a clear signal to the market that they should leave, uh, stay away from the GGEs. For example, the solar and new connections and regional interconnections bringing reliable green energy across the world to energy storage and intelligent resources. Canada can do it. After all, 85% of our grid is already clean, just like hydro, solar and wind. The technologies exist and the advantages are enormous. With the wildfire, uh, wildfires and heat waves that beat records, extreme floods here and around the world, we have to fight climate change, all of us. And Without carbon pollution, we'll have a healthier uh, environment, land, waters, people, and diversity. Let's reflect on the year we're having. Record heat month after month around the world. Record ocean temperatures. Record wildfires in all parts of Canada and around the world this year. Cutting carbon pollution means easing up on the gas pedal that's driving these damaging and costly impacts. By taking action is not only the responsible thing to do, from a climate and air pollution perspective. 
It is also taking advantage of generational economic opportunity. It will create good middle-class jobs to retrofit existing power plants and buildings and to build out new sources of electricity. That's why we see labor groups coming out in favor of building a cleaner grid because they see the potential for their workers. Clean electricity would, uh, will also help make Canada more competitive. More and more companies are searching for clean, affordable and reliable power. We want them to plug into Canada. When Volkswagen was asked why it chose Ontario for its new EV battery plant, Volkswagen emphasized that the availability of clean electricity was a key factor in that decision. That investment alone is expected to create 3,000 jobs, th direct jobs, and thousands more in spin-offs. We need to build on these successes right across the country. The Government of Ontario is right when it says the future is electric. I couldn't agree more. Bien entendu, l'énergie propre n'est pas seulement avantageuse pour les grandes entreprises. Clean energy is not just beneficial to big business, it's also good for small business and owners. The Canada Climate Institute did a study that shows that this shift to the green energy can reduce families' expenses by 12%. For example, in air conditioning, it's this can allow the average owner to save up to 4,500 in energy uh, costs. The message is getting out. In Europe last year, thermal pumps increased by 40%. And in the U.S., the sales of the thermal pumps go beyond air conditioning. Canada has clean energy for thermal pumps and EVs and so many other light technologies. And to face the increase in population, a greater energy capacity will be necessary. And I know some will cast doubt on the challenge, arguing that we would be better off sticking to the status quo. I would say that these regulations have been carefully designed following intense consultations to maximize the reduction of carbon pollution while still providing a reliable, affordable grid. They ensure flexibility and a technologically neutral approach with lots of time for electricity systems across the country to adjust. By regulating these change in the decision-making now, we can ensure polluting power plants can be phased down over 20 years while allowing them to run where they have the greatest value for keeping electricity affordable and reliable. And we recognize Canada is a vast and remote country. Some communities aren't on the main grid and don't have the same opportunities for low emitting technologies. These regulations account for them too. But perhaps most importantly, keeping electricity rates affordable across the country is at the core of this vision, so that there are only minimal impacts felt over a decade from now. In reality, without these regulations, provincial utilities will still need to invest at least $400 billion by 2050 for ongoing maintenance and to build out the electricity grid to meet the growing demand, demand that comes from population and economic growth, and demand that is set to increase as more and more Canadians use electric cars and heat pumps and industry relies on cleaner power. So the obvious question is why not make sure that this build out is clean and affordable? The federal government has made available over $40 billion to enable provinces and utilities to invest in clean electricity over the next 10 years. This includes measures like the new investment tax credit of 15% for non-emitting electricity generation, $10 billion in low-cost financing from the Canadian Infrastructure Bank for clean electricity projects, and $5 billion in new funding for the Smart Renewables and Electrification Pathways program. We estimate that if provinces, territories, and Indigenous partners take full advantage of these measures, federal government will offset more than half of provinces and territories' cost of cleaning the grid, reducing the direct cost to ratepayers. Let me repeat that. New federal investments in clean grid could amount to over half the investment cost provinces would be paying for a cleaner grid. Our investment in a net zero electricity grid will pay huge dividends in avoided climate change damage, reduce air pollution, and lower energy cost. How much? We estimate net benefit of close to $29 billion by 2050. $29 billion, which includes the savings that electricity generators will save from no longer paying for fuel. Bien sûr, il y aura toujours des gens qui diront que nous ne pouvons pas 
arriver à accomplir tout cela. Experts, like all Canadians, told us it's possible. So, a recent survey said 71% of Canadians <coughs> agree with federal uh, policy on clean energy. Thanks to clean energy, we can combat ch climate change, help the uh, environment, and reduce energy costs and stimulate econo economic growth. And the Canadian government has already taken steps on all these fronts. Now, go to the next step. Labor, experts, provinces and territories, indigenous organizations and utilities. This engagement has helped us design the proposed regulations so that they place reliability and affordability at the heart of the transition to a net zero grid. The regulations are draft. We look forward to continuing our extensive consultations to ensure we get this right because the health of our communities, our economy, and our planet depend on it. Friends, this is the spark to get us to net zero. Let's all, let's all take up the challenge. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much.